Alrighty then, YouTube, welcome back. Hey, and uh, you can see I've got a new setup, new camera, and you can't see it, it's off cam, oh, can't see it, it's off cam. It's right there, new mic, oh, burp, 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 there. Anyway, I <clears throat> uh, did a couple test records and yada 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 to get my settings right on this, and I thought, hell, I might as well go ahead and put together a video for you guys to show you how to do some of the stuff that I'm doing right here and uh, tell you how to do YouTube on the cheap or do YouTube on a budget. Uh, how to YouTube content create uh, without a whole lot of money. Going to be straightforward to the point video here. Didn't even have a separate intro or anything. That's why this is uh, rolling in right after uh, my little intro. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and just dive right into it and I'll tell you how to do this right here uh, without a whole lot of ducats. Anyway, uh, one of the first things about uh, YouTube content creation is that you need to have some sort of um, uh, notes or something like that. You need to be prepared to do what you're going to do so that you talk about what you wanted to talk about. Because if you're recording a video, obviously you thought about it for a while and like, hey, I'd like to record this, 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 and this. Um, put this, 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 and this on paper. Write it down or, as I do, on a tablet and uh, you're gonna see me look down from uh, time to time at uh, my tablet but hey this is gonna allow me to speak to you about what I wanted to speak to you about anyway YouTube being on the cheap uh, how do you do it a uh, bunch of different ways to do this and it doesn't have to cost a whole lot of money uh, I mean I run a vaping review channel I don't have a whole t uh, ton of subscribers or anything uh, I imagine just because based on the tags and everything that I'm, I'm going to put on the, to this video, a lot of folks are going to run across this who aren't in the vaping community. Uh, that is why I say this. Um, what you're going to want to do is find solutions that do what you want that don't cost a lot of money. Durr. Uh, you don't need to have a, a super expensive software solution. You don't need to have a super expensive camera. For those of those vapors who are uh, watching this channel, you know, uh, Scott Bonner, I get you 69. He's got this beastie 4K, probably 8K, honestly, camera that he uses to record his videos. And uh, he's got this thing set up and it works great for him. The man's got 50,000 plus subscribers though. So yeah, he can kind of justify the cost and the expense and, you know, the, the setup. He has a room dedicated for that purpose and nothing else. Um, I, with 455 subscribers, can't justify that. So uh, what does that mean? And, and I'm sure Scott also uses probably multi-hundred, maybe a couple thousand dollars software uh, to process his videos. And again, it's justified with the number of subscribers that he has. Someone like me cannot afford to do this thing. So we're going to go over a few things that I got and uh, uh, talk about what I did up to the, uh, this point. Initially, I used, <coughs> sorry, the laptop that uh, I'm looking at right now. I used its built-in webcam and I used its built-in microphone. Um, my earliest videos just looked and sounded like crap. There was a lot of background noise. The lighting was awful, etc., etc. And slowly looking at other videos and figuring out what people did, I figured out how it is that they did what they did. Um, and at the end of the day, to get a good video, you need a good camera. But there are workarounds to get better video, better audio with uh, lesser equipment. We're going to talk about some of that. One of the first things that you're going to want to do is have some sort of um, editor, some sort of video editing software. Um, more than anything else, that's going to give your videos some sort of professional feel, some sort of uh, flow and continuity uh, in the presentation to the viewer, to you guys in this instance. And uh, you don't need to get a purchased Sony Vegas. I think that might actually be free now, but whatever. You don't need Adobe Premiere. There are a lot of free solutions out there. And if you, like I, uh, have a Windows PC, uh, one of the greatest solutions out there is Windows Movie Maker made directly by Microsoft. Now, it's a 100% free solution. It's uh, very user friendly. It's very easy on the beginners. Here's the problem with Windows Movie Maker. As of January 10th, I think, uh, 2017, uh, Microsoft did go ahead and Canex support for uh, Windows Movie Maker, including having the download on their website. However, uh, a couple of folks did archive this stuff, and I mean, I've got a copy of it. But uh, I'll provide a link down below uh, in the, the Dropbox to uh, TechSpot, 
very reputable site. You're not going to download malware, viruses, anything like that off of it. Uh, and they have an archived uh, copy of the Windows Live Essential package. Windows Live Essential had Movie Maker, Windows Live Messenger, uh, Windows Live Mail, and a few other solutions in there. Stuff that you're not going to want to use. Windows 10 uh, and even Windows 8, if you're still, for whatever reason, using that, have better mail messenger solutions. In fact, if you install Windows Live Messenger um, at the next product update, or rather the next Windows update that you run, it'll kill Messenger and replace it with Skype. Because uh, Skype and uh, Microsoft are kind of you know, hand in hand. What you're going to want to do, and go to the link that I provide below, download the package, install it, and uh, under the options when you uh, are doing the install, just select Movie Maker. That's it. Nothing else. It uh, doesn't have a huge footprint on your hard drive. It's a couple hundred megabytes. Um, and it's very intuitive, very user-friendly software. There are tons and tons and tons of uh, tutorials on YouTube, so I'm not going to bore you to death with putting links below. Just type in Windows Movie Maker Tutorial. Boom. You're going to get a billion and one responses on that. And uh, take a look at those. Everyone's got their own different way of doing it. I certainly do. And uh, find one or more ways that work with you uh, for your purposes and just roll with it. Um, and like I said, uh, with the Live Essentials uh, suite, just install the uh, Windows Movie Maker. Not a Windows user, don't like Windows Movie Maker, whatever, cool. There are a bunch of open source software solutions out there. Uh, probably my favorite because of its uh, user friendliness uh, for the, the new person who might be diving into this is Avid Emux. I'll go ahead and provide a uh, link to their website down below. It's open source, it's cross-platform as well. So it'll work on Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, perfectly fine. So if you're a Mac or Linux user, boom, it works perfectly fine. And it's got an interface fairly close to Windows Movie Maker, so it's very easy to use. Um, again, I'll provide a link to that below as well. And the cost of both of those software solutions, zero. Nada. Doesn't cost a dime. Um, aside from that, uh, that type of uh, video editing software, what do you need? You need some means of recording video and audio. Um, and like I said just a little while ago, uh, for the longest time I used my laptop and its built-in webcam and mic. And meh, even expensive laptops don't have all that great of software or um, hardware for recording uh, audio and video. The webcams just aren't able to do what you need it to in a little tiny wafer-thin uh, package. Uh, hold on for me for one second. Alrighty, and I'm back, and uh, hey, perfect example of why you might sometimes need to have a video editing software. I intended for this to be an entire long, single stream record. <clears throat> However, comma, my cat decided to have a hairball. Yay. Uh, didn't want you guys to have to hear that happening, so... Eh. Uh, cleaned it up, and I'm back. Anyway, so, um, yeah. We were, I believe, talking about uh, the software solutions. And uh, like I said, it doesn't have to cost you a dime to do any of that. And then we moved on to the webcam. I was using my laptop uh, webcam. And like I said, the, the little tiny wafer thin um, webcams that are inside of a laptop, even an expensive one, even one of these expensive Mac, uh, uh, iMac all-in-ones, they're never going to compete with even a decent uh, standalone uh, HD webcam. Just not going to happen. Uh, th those HD webcams just have a whole lot more room for a lot more focus and you know, hardware, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Generally speaking, the mics in those uh, webcams are going to be better than the ones built into your uh, laptop, and sometimes better than the ones that are into your all-in-one desktops, like the iMac or the you know the Dell XPS 27 or whatnot. Um, also, uh, in those uh, PCs laptops and whatnot, you're not going to be able to move the camera around and position it where you want. Uh, in particular, the Dell XPS 27, instead of having the uh, camera at the top, has it at the bottom of the screen, so that the entire time you're talking, you look like this if you, you know, you're you having to do this to look at the camera, and then everyone's got a view of, you know, up your nose, basically. Or if you're looking at the screen, it looks to the camera as if you're doing this, and you still have the view up your nose. Yeah, not ideal. Uh, I mean, what you want to do is have your uh, camera position just directly above your laptop uh, screen or monitor if you're using a desktop. And as I'm looking at the monitor, as I'm doing right now, looking at myself talk, it looks as if, you know, I'm looking right at the camera. I'm actually looking at the camera right now. 
Um, and if I look down slightly, it's not much of a difference to the uh, viewer. So yeah, get a good uh, camera. Uh, to that end, uh, I recommend personally the Logitech C920. It's one of the greatest webcams out there. Uh, came out in 2012, and the thing's still one of the YouTube de facto standards for content creators. Uh, why? It just works. I mean, the thing is phenomenal. It works, uh, records at great quality. It's got good auto light uh, correction sensing. Uh, it's got pretty decent autofocus. Um, and the built-in mic is not bad. It really isn't all that bad. Uh, Logitech has a couple other solutions that are out uh, uh, as well. Um, they released the C922, uh, which is their gaming version of the C920. Not really a whole lot extra for YouTube content creation, but if you're a gamer and you want those gaming features, not a bad way to go. Uh, cost about 15 bucks more. And they just recently released the C930, which is the C920 on crack, and it uh, has better 1080p recording. Not a huge deal, and for the $20 to $25 price difference, I, I don't generally think it's worth it to the average consumer, uh, just because you already get 1080p recording with the C920. Hang on for a second, gotta take a beverage break. Yeah, <clears throat> a little bit of a dry shrope there. <clears throat> and the Logitech cameras, and the C920 specifically, but all the ones that I've mentioned, all work with Windows, Mac, and Linux. And you have software suites for Windows and Mac, uh, directly available from Logitech's website. Linux, I'm, I haven't done any digging on it, uh, but I'm sure somebody out there has made some specific Logitech recording software for uh, the Linux platform, or there is some other webcam type software out there that just works phenomenally well with Linux. I like Linux, I poked around with it, I don't use it as my everyday driver, so I really couldn't tell you. Um, that takes care of your video, right? Well, you got a couple of other options too. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy a dedicated webcam like I'm using for this. Um, if you're on the market for a good point and click camera and there's tons and tons of them out there and you're gonna buy one of those anyway, uh, you can use that as well. You can use that to record your content. Some of them support uh, video pass through. So if you hook up a USB cable to the camera and plug it into your computer, you can actually see it on screen as you're recording it, or you can use you know, potentially even your uh, uh, software on your laptop or desktop to record that video. Uh, that's a, another way to go. And it's a two birds with one stone type of thing. If, you, if you're looking for one of those, it'll work. Same thing, ditto for a uh, personal video recorder. If you're looking just to record uh, home movies and whatnot and you want really good archival quality, hell, you might as well use that as well. Uh, a lot of those support the pass-through feature as well. Not all of them though, so I mean, if that's an important thing to you, take a look and uh, do your research on that. Uh, a lot of great solutions out there for point-and-click cameras and whatnot. Uh, GoPro. A lot of folks are using GoPros as well. Uh, works perfectly fine. So if you want a GoPro, Use it. I mean, hell, you might as well. The thing records at 4K. Uh, get a good mic with the GoPro, though. Uh, let's segue that into microphones. Uh, the mic that I have, and I'm going to show it to you, and I'm sorry if the audio gets all janky while I do it, is the Samsung Go mic. Um, there we go. Put that back down. Uh, it, it's a great USB mic that does not require any drivers or software. You plug it in, boom, Windows recognizes it. That's it. You plug it in, boom, Mac recognizes it. Linux recognizes it. It just works awesome. Whatever recording software you're using, though, make sure you select the right microphone. Um, backtrack a little bit about the mic. Let's talk about the Logitech C920 mic. It's a good mic. It, it, it really is. It just doesn't pick up high fidelity and mid-range sounds all that great. It's a webcam mic. It's better, infinitely better than the one that comes with my laptop because it does reduce a lot of ambient noise, but it doesn't pick up the highs and mids quite as good as the Samsung, and it doesn't reduce the ambient background noise quite as much as the Samsung. The Samsung I got uh, is a dual purpose mic. It does omnidirectional. It's got, uh, here, let me show you, the back microphone that I'm not using right now and the front microphone that I am using right now. Uh, so that if you're doing web conferencing or whatnot, or you need to hear something and that's on the other side of the mic, you, you can pick that up just fine. Uh, I personally have got it in our cardioid mode, which basically says, let's use just this front mic, and it changes the waveform so that it's trying to focus uh, towards the 
source of the sound. I've got the mic pointed directly at me right now. And that does a couple of things. One, it picks up the fidelity of my voice a lot better, the highs and the mids, which uh, is like 80% of the human voice spectrum. Uh, so if you have a webcam mic that doesn't pick up highs and mids very well, it's going to sound like you're talking in a tin can. Uh, as it is right now, this thing picks up sound really, really well. And uh, sorry about that noise out there. Some truck is driving by my house. And um, yeah, this thing just works really well. Whatever mic you get, make sure it uh, has a feature for either uh, unidirectional sound, if they call it that, or cardioid, which is a focused type of sound. And I think you should be fine. Get a USB mic that's independent from the webcam. And again, when you're using the software, just select the right mic. I'll go ahead and uh, provide some information on this particular mic. I picked it up for 27 bucks, including shipping. So pfft, nothing. I, I got my webcam for 40 bucks for shipped. Yeah. Um, a lot of other inexpensive studio mics are out there, but you know, just, like I said, make sure you get a cardio with one and make sure that they are Windows, Mac, Linux compatible as applicable to you. Uh, just do a little bit of research and a little bit of Google foo. Um, and oh, another thing about the cardioid mic. Uh, and this is just a preference thing for me. My particular mic. See it on the side there. I'm sorry if my voice isn't picking up very well. Uh, it has a switch on it, a physical hard switch that I can select omnidirectional or, or cardioid mode or focused uh, unidirectional mode. Uh, Make sure your mic has a hard switch so that you don't have to use a software setting to do that. It works much better. Uh, so enough on that. Uh, again, webcam mic, meh. separate webcam mic, okay. I mean, especially like the C920, works perfectly fine. Something like the Samsung here, awesome. Awesome little mic. I mean, it's just like the same grade of quality that you're going to get out of uh, a professional recording studio. Hell no. I mean, they, they've got multi-thousand dollar mics. This thing cost me 27 bucks. For what it is, though, it sounds really, really good. Now, segue off of that into a software solution for your audio. You are going to want something to reduce ambient noise. No matter how good your mic is, unless you have these multi-thousand dollar studio mics and you're recording in a noise or sound studio, uh, you're going to record uh, background noise. You're, you're going to get some. There's no way to avoid that. To that end, I use Audacity. I love Audacity. It's free open source software that is Windows, Mac, and Linux compatible. It's totally cross-platform. And one of the great things that uh, you get out of this is that it's free, 100% free open source software. And as I record this video clip, after I'm done with all this, I'll import the video clip directly into Audacity and it'll pull only the audio. I perform a uh, noise reduction filter on it and I export that as an MP, uh, MP3 file. I'll do that for all the video clips. Now we're up to two uh, for this particular recording and reduce all the uh, audio out of it or reduce all the noise out of the audio. When I go into Windows Movie Maker, my choice of uh, software, I mute the uh, audio channel or the audio track for the video and then I overlay it with the fixed audio from Audacity and everything just sounds great. Awesome. I mean, I can't recommend Audacity enough. It's been around for a long time, and it's one of the uh, chosen uh, solutions for uh, audio recording. And with very, very, very good reason. All right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, uh, let me take a little break here. Settings. Uh, a couple things. Let's talk about the mic, because the settings for that are the easiest. Uh, in Windows, and I'm not sure exactly where it is in Mac, go into your recording uh, device's properties and set the level uh, gain all the way up. Just set it all the way up. Um, for whatever reason, Windows takes the default maximum uh, recording range for a, or volume gain range for a microphone, and it cuts it in half. I don't know why they do that. I, I don't know why they do that. Uh, make sure you turn that all the way up, and you're good. You're going to get the best quality sound that you can. And if you need to, you can play around with Audacity uh, following that. Video. Uh, for this particular camera, this uh, uh, C920, a uh, couple settings and things that you're going to want to do, and I'll just uh, post it down below in the uh, description. But basically what you're going to want to do is set your camera up, set your mic up, get your recording set up like I have here set up, go into auto light settings, turn it on, 
and let the camera adjust to the lighting and white levels and contrast and all that automatically. Then turn it off and disable all the auto features on uh, video other than autofocus. That's not going to hurt anything. Uh, you can leave the uh, right sound on, the uh, automatic sound correction on because that doesn't affect anything. And record at 720p versus 1080p. A couple reasons I'll get into that in just a second. The main reason is that um, using an external mic like I am, the Logitech C920 is notorious for having video go out of sync with audio unless you play around with your video settings like I just mentioned. And again, it'll be down below in the uh, Dropbox. Um, yeah, so make sure you do that if you're using this camera, especially with an external mic. And I don't generally recommend recording at 1080p unless you're doing a video game review channel or something or a Blu-ray review channel that requires recording at 1080p, you know, where you have to show something back at 1080p. For, I'd argue, 99% of the stuff that is out on YouTube, 720p is going to be plenty good. It's, it, it's HD. It, it's not full HD, but it's HD. And it works perfectly fine for the purposes of what most folks are going to do. Uh, and it uh, does a couple of things. One, it cuts your video size, the actual size of your video, down to less than half. Now, if you've got a terabyte of hard drive space like I do, that's not a big deal. Uh, but you got to remember, you've got to process that video. Um, so the bigger the file is, the longer the processing takes. Uh, and that's time out of your life. Also, you have to upload it to YouTube at some point. And huge 4K videos take monstrous amounts of time to upload to YouTube, no matter how fast your um, your internet connection is. I mean, I've got a 150 megabit connection. I don't upload at 150 megabits to YouTube. YouTube just doesn't accept that. Um, so yeah, I generally recommend keeping your uh, video sizes down to 720p regardless, but for the Logitech with an external mic specifically because it'll uh, really alleviate a lot of problems with the uh, audio and video syncing. Um, if you want some examples of me having recorded with my uh, webcam and built in, my built-in laptop webcam and mic, take a look at some of my very earliest videos and where I didn't run it through Audacity. They sound like crap. They really do. And then up to just my last video, uh, or two videos ago, rather, uh, I recorded everything with the same mic, the same camera, and then I ran everything through Audacity. It sounds a hell of a lot better. Um, so, yeah. Audacity does do a lot. Uh, I recorded some clips uh, with this new webcam, um, and the audio is certainly loads, loads better than what I got with the, uh, the laptop uh, microphone, but n not good enough for me. Uh, not so good that it didn't warrant a $27 purchase for me. However, if you uh, are willing uh, or not willing, rather, to buy a new microphone. If you just want to buy a new camera and get the, the best video quality that you can out of a webcam, and you're willing to play around with the software settings a little bit, you can use the built-in uh, microphone from the C920, and it sounds great, especially after you run it up through Audacity. You're just not going to get the, the high-fidelity high voice sound that you're going to see in most YouTube videos. Um... Logitech also offers uh, other great webcams. Uh, they have a 4K camera out there that costs 200 freaking dollars. And I'm sure the thing looks and sounds phenomenal as it records videos. However, I just can't just, even if I had the money for a $200 webcam, I wouldn't be able to justify the cost of that simply because I could sink 300 bucks into a, you know, you know, fantabulous point and click camera and probably get better video and audio recording quality than out of a $200 uh, dedicated webcam. Uh, or GoPro. I mean, hell, it, you know, I seriously doubt that that webcam can compete with a GoPro. So that being said, you know, my personal recommendation <clears throat> is twofold. One, stick with your webcam and mic that you have, run it through Audacity. It costs you nada. Zip. Two, buy a new webcam. Use the built-in mic, and that'll run you about 40 bucks. Run it through Audacity. Sounds really damn good. Three, so I guess it was a threefold recommendation. Uh, get a nice cheap, uh, not cheap, inexpensive cardioid mic and run that through Audacity. Use it as your recording source. Sounds great. And you're, you're going to be getting really, really favorable results. Um, 
A lot of things to consider if you get a point and click camera or a GoPro. You do need to also add the cost of a good sized SD card, micro SD card or SD, whatever the uh, camera uses. Um, and I'd recommend nothing at this point in today's market, nothing less than a 128 gig card. There's no point in buying a 64 gig card if the 128 doesn't cost a whole hell of a lot extra. So factor in that cost as well. Uh, me personally, I prefer the webcam uh, versus a good point and click because it records directly to my hard drive and I can preview myself recording the video. And you know, a lot of these cameras might support that anyway. But uh, one of the big things um, about it is that it doesn't cost me a lot of money. You know, uh, it it cost me forty bucks for a really really good quality webcam. So leave that to you. If you're going to uh, do all of these things, uh, one thing that I do recommend, and I can't show it to you because I'm using it right now, is a tripod. Get yourself a good tripod off of Amazon. I mean, get the Amazon Basics brand. They cost seven bucks for a, a tripod that's, you know, about about that tall. You know, it's you know eight to ten inches tall. Perfect for what you're doing. I stick my laptop and my tripod up on top of a box as I'm recording, so it's eye level, so I don't look like I'm looking down at the the camera. And uh, yeah, it just works really, really well. Um, also, if you're doing, like I got a vaping review channel, it's going to help me with uh, doing close-up shots on the table uh, if I'm showing people how to build coils and whatnot. So yeah, something else to consider. Tripods are great. A third uh, option that you may have not considered um, is your phone. If you've got a good smartphone, unlike me, mine's, okay, mine, mine's decent. But if you've got a, a phone with a really good camera, like the the newest iPhones, iPhone 6, 7, 8, and above, they have really good cameras. The newest Samsung uh, Galaxies have really great cameras. What you might want to consider is using the camera in your phone, because those record at really, really high quality. And you already own the thing. And that, that part of it, other than a tripod, it's zero cost, period. So use what you got. And if you're going to get, uh, if you're going to use your phone, Get yourself one of these. It's a tripod phone holder, and the way they work is you get this little, there, let me pull it up here, this little springy thing, opens up, you clamp your phone into it, and you screw the back of that into a tripod, and you set your tripod up so that it's facing you, you know, from the side or whatever, as you're recording a video, it actually is facing you, the tripod will be on the back here, set up into an L bracket, and it works great. Uh, I think that thing ran me four bucks on Amazon. So yeah, if you're going to use your phone, yeah, do that. Also, if you're going to use your phone, consider using the uh, built-in or the included uh, wired headset that comes in because it has a microphone and, and it's made to record voice specifically because they're made for phone calls. So consider using that or a good, good, good Bluetooth headset if you have one or an external mic, uh, like I have, if you're going to record through your computer, if your phone supports that. So a couple more uh, considerations there. Me, personally, go with the Logitech. It's made for this. It does nothing else, and it does it really, really well. <clears throat> While you're recording, though, no matter how good your equipment is, you, you got to do a couple things to make your videos look good. And these cost very little to nothing. Um, lighting. Lighting is your friend as you're recording a video. Right now I'm sitting right over here. I've got my uh, double door, um, sliding glass door wide open. The sun's coming in on this side. Uh, my kitchen lights are over here. And my overhead halogen lights are uh, coming down so that I'm lit up very well. And then my camera can handle that lighting very well and record a nice, healthy uh, frame rate. You don't have to get exterior or external lighting to put up. I mean, I don't have room to store that stuff, so I'm not doing any of that. Um, ambient lighting is your friend. Ambient noise is not your friend. If you have a particularly loud refrigerator, air conditioner, anything like that, or if your cat, as mine did, is about to have a hairball, all that stuff's going to show up in the, uh, the video. Um, so turn off what you can. I mean, my air conditioner is not particularly loud. It may have come on during the video and showed up. You're probably not going to hear it. My fridge is literally feet away from me, and uh, it's not particularly loud, so I'm not worried about it. But if you have noisy equipment, turn that stuff off as you're recording, and it won't come on your video. Just things to consider. And that doesn't cost anything. It's just stuff that you got to plan around. <clears throat> uh, to pick up all these things, though, um, eBay is going to be one of your friends. Consider buying used stuff from reputable sellers in your country so that you don't have to wait for shipping. 
and uh, you'd be amazed how much you could save. I mean, like I said, the $60 webcam that I bought, I picked up for 40 bucks. This $40 microphone that I'm using, I picked up for 27 bucks, and they're in great shape. And they work perfectly. Uh, something else to consider for ambience, for uh, something ambient. If you look behind me at that uh, drop cloth, uh, I put that up there because we have a bulletin board with uh, pictures of my family on there. I don't want to advertise that all over YouTube, so I just put a drop cloth on there. And, you know, it's better than taking the bulletin board down and having a big plain white wall behind me. Something interesting to look at. Uh, so, stuff to consider with that anyway. Uh, Alright, something that a lot of folks don't think about with YouTube videos. Your thumbnail. A lot of folks just record a video, upload it, and boom, let YouTube grab a uh, thumbnail. That's fine. Consider getting some image editing software like GIMP, uh, which is a uh, free uh, cross-platform open source image editor uh, for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It'll allow you to handle transparency if, if, like, if you, like I do, have made your own logo and it has a transparent background. It'll allow you to post it on top of anything just perfectly fine without having to mess around with anything. It'll allow you to put text in these uh, pictures. You can make a very customized uh, thumbnail, and it looks a heck of a lot more professional than just grabbing a random frame out of your video. Because that frame that YouTube grabs might end up looking like this. And you never know. Um, there are a lot of uh, great solutions like Adobe Photoshop and whatnot, and Photoshop even has free versions. And if you're into that, yeah, go ahead and do that. I personally recommend GIMP because it is cross-platform and it works on everything, and there are shit ton of uh, tutorials out there for them. Uh, uh, two other options that work, and they're both related. Pixlr. Uh, Pixlr is a free, uh, I don't know if it's open source, but it's free software. And Pixlr has a free online version. So if you're low on hard drive space, you don't feel like uh, uploading or downloading and installing something, or if you're doing this image editing from another computer, you can uh, actually go into Pixlr's website and use their free online editor. And it's pretty powerful. It's a little slower than say GIMP or Photoshop or whatnot, but it's pretty all-inclusive and powerful. So, you know, that's something else to uh, to think about. Sorry, I keep looking. Uh, sorry if I keep looking down at here. I'm just wanting to see uh, what I'm looking at. Okay, my video. You saw that I had the disclaimers uh, at, at the front of the video, and you're going to see the disclaimer at the back of the video as well. Um, consider having those, especially if you're you are a reviewer um, of a product. And let people know, hey, I didn't purchase this, or I did purchase this, unless I otherwise stated. Uh, it's not going to sway my opinion one way or the other, blah, blah, blah. Your standard shit that you got to say if you're reviewing stuff uh, so that people don't get butthurt. Um, the way I created that is I created a Photoshop slide. A single Photoshop slide with all that text sitting all over it. And then I set the properties of that Photoshop playback to a 10-second uh, slide. And then I put transitions in on the slide so that it, you know, the text just explodes out. Just something interesting to look at. And the great thing about Photoshop is you can save that presentation as an MP4 video. That's awesome. Uh, if you don't have Microsoft Office or you don't want to buy it or whatever, sweet, that's fine. Download LibreOffice uh, or some other free open office suite. Those are cross-platform Windows, Mac, Linux, and they support the same features. And they have their presentation software that is their equivalent to PowerPoint. And they work perfectly, perfectly fine. So, yeah. Adds a more professional touch and look to your videos. Speaking of that, uh, I um, the intro that I have, uh, I paid for that. I went onto the iVipid website. I'll put a link down below for that. And I paid 6 bucks for that 720p video that is at the front of my videos. $6. Nothing. You can't beat that. It took me three minutes to make that. It processed online and on their server for about a minute and a half, and then I downloaded it on the spot once I paid for it. Awesome. If I wanted a 1080p version of that, I would have paid an extra $3 for it. I don't do 1080p videos, so I don't see the point in paying that three extra bucks. Um, so with all that stuff considered, and I'll put a link down below for iVipid. All that stuff considered, what are my monetary costs? What have I gone out of pocket for? Uh, my webcam, 40 bucks. My mic, $27.50. Uh, my tripod, and that is back here somewhere, uh, $7. Um, not really using this anymore, so I don't consider it part of my cost, and you don't have to buy it. Um, and my iVipid intro, $6. $70.50 is what I have spent to get the setup that I have. That's it. I use ambient lighting from outside and in my kitchen, stuff that I have already. Um, I don't do any type of fancy noise reduction other than audacity. That's all the money I've spent. 
if you just want to use your um, uh, smartphone, all you need to do is get the phone holster, that's a few bucks, and a tripod. You're looking at 12 bucks. If you want to do the intro, another six bucks on top of that. You know, if you use your uh, smartphone, you're looking at under $20 cost. If you want to use your built-in webcam and you don't need to get a, you then don't need this or a tripod or anything else. And potentially the only thing you might have to buy if you want to is the iVipid intro. Or, you know, get it off of some other website. And there's plenty of sites that offer, I think, less meh or more meh, less uh, impressive intros that are free. So you could potentially get away with absolutely free, 100% free, using your built-in webcam and a good video editor, uh, free one, uh, your built-in microphone and audacity to reduce the noise, uh, download a free meh uh, intro somewhere, and use free Microsoft Office alternatives to record your disclaimers, use a free image editor to make your thumbnails. What does YouTube have to cost you? Zip. I spent the 70 bucks because I want the better video, quality, uh, video recording quality. And uh, there's just no getting around that. Nothing replaces good hardware. So, bleh. if you have a good phone, though, you've already got some decent hardware. So, yeah, uh, that's enough of me doing this. So I'll go ahead and start wrapping this up. Like I said, all the links uh, for the software that uh, I mentioned are going to be down below. I'll go ahead and put them in there. Consider uh, that you don't have to buy these super expensive cameras. I mean, for under a hundred bucks, certainly under a hundred bucks, you can have a really, really good setup with great audio, great video, and you'll be rocking and rolling. So, yeah, with that, uh, I'll say thanks for swinging by. Thanks for watching this video. So, sorry, this thing went so freaking long-winded, but you know, it was a lot of information to put out uh, to people on how to do this. So I'll go ahead and cut this short now, and uh, for all those guys who are regulars to my channel, uh, I uh, will see you before too long with another vaping review. Uh, I've got a couple other things coming down the pipeline. For all you guys that swung by and may be interested in vaping reviews, hey, uh, consider clicking that uh, subscribe button down below. Uh, it'll be on that side, actually. And uh, look at some of my other content. For anyone who's not interested in vaping reviews, hey, thanks for swinging by and seeing this video as it is, and maybe pass this channel on to someone else who does vape. Uh, and with that, I'll just go ahead and cut this short and say thanks for swinging by again. And uh, I may or may not see you next time, depending on how you got to this video. So see you later.